They sound incredibly similar, but reflection and refraction are totally different things. They both describe how waves behave when they meet a surface. So let's talk about reflection first. Now, in the diagram I'm drawing, a light or another wave hits a mirror. We call it a plane mirror, P-L-A-N-E, meaning a flat mirror, um, and it bounces off. Now, if we draw in what's called a normal line, which is an imaginary line 90 degrees to the surface, we can see that the angle the wave makes between the normal and itself is equal to the angle it makes between its reflected ray and the normal. We call both those things angle of incidence and the angle of reflection, um, which is indicated by the I and R in the diagram. And generally speaking, uh, this is called the rule of reflection or the law of reflection, uh, which is that those two angles are equal to each other. Now, something else we can also do with mirrors when light reflects off them um, is see images. This is how um, you know, mirrors work. That's the whole point. So let's say I've got a tree, um, which I'm going to reflect into this mirror down here. So light goes in, light comes out. The instant ray and the reflected ray have the same angle compared to the normal. Um, this time, and this is a very rough drawing, um, I'm going to draw another ray, which just comes in a slightly different angle, and a person seeing the light rays down here. Now, what the person sees is their brain and... Uh, uh, everyone with brains does this, um, is tricked slightly uh, to see the tree as being as if it's behind the mirror. When you look at a mirror, it's almost like you have a twin the other side of it. Um, so this is where the rays of light appear to come from. Um, and this describes this tree. Uh, it's what we call a virtual image. Virtual, just like virtual reality, means it's not really there, but your brain kind of tricks yourself into thinking it is there. Okay, let's talk about refraction then on the other side. So uh, refraction doesn't talk about mirrors, but it talks about light hitting other surfaces. Now, a really common example for this is light going from air into glass. So let's find out what happens in this instance. So when light hits glass, it bends um, if it's, it hits it at an angle. Um, and then when it leaves the glass, it also bends back to the same angle it was before. If it doesn't hit at an angle, it just goes straight through like normal. Now, um, we need to look at why this happens. What is going on here to mean that light can bend? We've talked about light going in straight lines. You've probably taught, heard that since primary school. So um, at the exact point at which it hits the glass surface, uh, we're going to look at, instead of the light rays as a line, we're going to look at them as what's called wave fronts. Now, these um, are just another way of representing waves, um, and they're just a perpendicular to the light ray um, and they're just like ripples of water so each wave front is like the peak of a wave so the distance between each wave front is one wavelength just like water ripples kind of going outwards if you chuck a pebble in a pond so um, let's have a look at what happens when it reaches glass. So one part of the wave, because it's at an angle, one part of the wave will hit the glass first. And what happens is it slows down because glass is more dense than air. But the whole wave doesn't slow down at the same time. The bit on the left from the way we're looking at it slows down first. And the whole wave will kind of be bent round um, in towards the normal in this case um, because that part reaches the glass and slows down first. So how would you write that as like a kind of three point uh, explanation? So I'm going to call it A and B. A just means the bit on the left that's circled. So we say A would reach the glass boundary first. And what happens then is that the wave doesn't have to be light, but usually is the wave will slow down. The reason it slows down is because glance, glass is more dense than air. Density, mass over volume, essentially how much matter there is in a certain volume. Um, glass is a solid, so the particles are very, very uh, compactly packed in together in neat rows. Whereas in air, you know, we know air is relatively not that dense uh, because um, it is a gas. So um, as a result, the wave will bend, at, we say, towards the normal. Now, we didn't draw the normal in on our diagram earlier, so let's just draw it in now. Um, so normal is just a dotted line. It's an imaginary line we draw in 90 degrees to the surface, and we can see that actually the angle it goes in at um, is slightly bigger than the angle it comes out at compared to the normal. So we say it bends towards the normal in this case. When it leaves the glass, the opposite happens. Now, um, when we are drawing um, it going straight on into glass, um, the same effect would happen, uh, but it wouldn't bend. Okay, but you'll notice that the wavelengths have become like close together. The wave fronts have become close together. Together, sorry, that shows us that the wavelength has decreased overall.
Okay, so the speed has decreased and the wavelength has decreased when it's gone to a more dense medium. Uh, the frequency has not changed at all. The frequency remains constant. Now, um, the required practical for this topic is all about ripple tank. Please see my other video for that. But in a ripple tank, when you've got ripples of water, um, the same effect can happen. Um, but that means the water is going from deep to shallow water. So the idea is when it's deep water, that's the same thing as being low density. And shallow water is high density. It's the same effect.